Careful Moodling will be starting in a few moments, minutes. Well, you know how early I am. Anyway, just... Good afternoon. Hello, hello. It's gorgeous here in the UK, near Manchester, in Cheshire. How the devil are you? I'm actually really happy today because I've been doing some new stitching for my new book cover, for my new range with highlight crafts. And there's the moodling cover for my book that we will be with you at the end of the month i'm so excited just can't handle it i know i know oh stop you know what'll happen you know what'll happen anyway let's have a good morning to jenny let's see good morning jenny greetings hope weather's nice near there not seeing anybody else um i'll give a few minutes because i I understand life is sort of getting back to normal, but you know, I, I pray and hope that you, when you get a few minutes, you can have a quick shufty on here and have a look what I do. Just to show you something else, this is the Aqua Stone. I know, remind us to start. I'm already started. Yeah, go away. Um, so yeah, the wet in Yorkshire, Blavers Bake Off. Let's get it on there. Love his bake off. Look at that. She's having a she's got a bun in the oven. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here's the aqua stone I used. Now I know it's an old, an old uh, rice paper, but I wanted to try it because I haven't got my new ones yet. So I wanted to see. And I am very, very happy with that. It's maintained its fabricity, <laughs> malleability. It's I put a little bit too much black on here. But I'm going to go over it with the cadence and do it in the, you know, the walnut. So, yeah, I have noticed that the wear and tear on this might need a bit more. Play on it. Oh, excuse me, my fingers. But, yeah, it's only one coat of it. I use the decoupage glue. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? But, yeah, it's got that fabric, so you could even say it's vegan. Chops are good in. Anyway. Here's the concertina that we'll be getting in the kit, if you so wish. Um, it's quite big. It's A3, I think. And it's pre-folded because it's just going to be easier. One, it's cheaper to post. And two, you know, if you add it round one of these, everybody will be like, the post would be double. It makes me laugh to post. Here's just a little observation. You go to the post office, right, and you've got a gap that big say your gaps that big and you go in and it just touches like that oh too it's too big you need that that needs it needs to go as a large parcel hi kim hi kim there we go she's all but she's not an not a, a well lady kim but she she it, it doesn't stop her doesn't stop her um so yeah if it goes like that right oh no 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 you need you need that sent by um a forklift you know what i mean no but when you get it through your post like that, <coughs> trying to get it through your door out there makes me annoyed that really makes me annoyed so anyway we thought it'd be easier if it's just pre-scored done boom bob your uncle fan is your aunt so i've also found these books uh, the Messiah Nouvelles edition, and oh, don't touch the camera with this. And I don't want to use this yet because I've got other papers first. Uh, but I am using them, I'm not saving them for best because, like my knickers, they'll end up being too small. Not that the books will be too small, but you know, they wear out. 
Well, you know what I mean. Anyway, so I found this one. It's cool because look at the foxing on it. You know, it's a proper, it's been in a smoker's house. So, um, but I can say that because I was a smoker. So don't buy a reindeer. Oh, hey, what's this? Be good wool. Spencer Chapman, living dangerously. So I feel a bit bad, but what will happen if I don't? That's a cracking page. Now, if you get a page like this, don't use it. Scan it, photograph it, shove it in your printer, scan it, whatever you can do. And you've got your own fox copy. I'm sick of this. Look at me. I'm, look at my girly nails. Look, look. I can't get the ink out. It's horrible. Look, I can't get the ink out. Orange nails. Anyway. Oh, look, I wanted to show you that. Can you see? I had COVID. And there's a real, <laughs> there's a real dent in my nail. And they say, don't they? Can you see it? Not that, why would you want to see it? Well, I'm telling you, that's why. So I am bumping my nail, look. And that's when I had COVID. It shows you, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah, keep these papers like this. Don't throw them. Scan them, shove them in, and then print them off. What's that about? Is that a bookworm? I've never seen a bookworm. Oh, I've got a bookworm. Oh, yeah. Somebody stabbed my book. Somebody stabbed it. Look, can you say it? I think I've got a bookworm. It's not. Yeah. Anyway. Shut up. Get on with it. Get on. I want a page that's... It even feels great to touch. So, it even feels great. I know I only said I was going to do this an hour ago, so I'm not expecting many people. So, I've got my page um and my concertina page excuse my tummy is perfect for now you can either keep the line like that or keep the bottom there it's entirely up to you and the actual it's in the car, actually, the, the actual one, because I took it to the monastery for everybody to use, and, uh, yeah, I think they liked it. So I'm just going to do an outside etch. Excuse me, my tummy is really playing havoc. Sorry. Okay. So you can see that needs to be shifted a bit, doesn't it? So... An inch so if I mark excuse me one minute ten and a half there okay and I'm going to mark it ten and a half and twelve at the top And then shove that over a bit. So, might need a bit more. I'm not too worried. Just put an extra bit on there. Do it that way so you can see. I don't want to waste any of these papers' edges because these are the, ed the edges are the ones that really interest me. Stupid, I know. But once you start getting into your mixed media and stuff, you start realising that the interesting parts are the parts that they normally throw away. A bit like people. <laughs> um, right. Anyway, so I've got a guideline there, which is okay. I'm enjoying that. Nice size. Um, oh, 
I'm happy with that. I've got some colouring pencils. I've got my bronzer needle and my Faber Castell. Um, if you are looking for the mid range, these are brilliant. If you are looking for top range, these are brilliant along with Prisma. So pick your poison as they say. So here, what I want to do is create like almost like um one of my moodles on it. But the best way for me to create my moodles, as you know, is with a, cu a couple of coppers. So I'm going to get the coppers out. Coppers. A couple of coppers. But all sorts of rubbish in my purse. Bits of crumbs and cruddy bits. So I'm always conscious that I go that way. So I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to put it on the outside of the edges. I'm going to test my pen. That looks a bit thin. It's on its way out that. It's a good pen though, don't get me wrong. It's a really good pen. It's just been used and used and used. God, well, this is the number two, so it's quite light. So to start here. In fact, I'm going to start on this. Tell you why, because I've got a bit of a bump on my table. Okay, so. Okay, can you see these crazy, crazy lines? So I'm looking at this and I'm just going to put a crazy line there. And that's about right. So we've got the edges. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just darken the edges. So um, it sounds a bit, a bit strange. I've not done this before, but I think this will guide me a little bit better as to where I'm going. Because I'm putting some shading on. I want to know where to stop and start, so I think... This look can all be taken off later on. There we go. So I've got my parts. I'm going to go in now with a small pen and I'm going to make my edges bigger if I want them to be. Um, I went to the monastery the other day um, we had some brilliant um, time together myself, Jane, Leslie, Elaine, Dawn, Julie, Ariane, another Julie. Just brilliant. Uh, I took my little box of things and people made me uh, sample cards, which, you know, so to me that's uh, evident that they can be used easily and quickly. Uh, and Karen, the lovely Karen Keats said to me that she loved the last collection more than all of them which is really cool so yeah people were really receptive to this latest one that I'm doing with um, highlight crafts so um, I'm just adding this in there just to thicken it up um, yeah, this seems to be a lot of rubbish going on. 
Oh, hang on, we've got some more. Not many people in, to, in today. Oh, have you not? Carry on watching, Helen. Um, seems to be a lot of argy-bargy about stamps and stuff online, and I'm just so pleased that it's quite clear with mine. You know, because there's lots of grey areas, but yeah, people are very unhappy or happy. Or, I don't know, but anyway, um, yeah, it feels very much like it did a few years ago. Not a nice place to be, I must admit. Anyway, so yeah, I got a lovely compliment saying Karen said she loved these stamps. Um, you know, I had another person say she's a bit confused sometimes when she goes online. She sees lots of stamps all similar to mine. But there again, you could always say that my stamps are similar to other people's. But yeah, I, I know what she meant. I know what she meant. Anyway, so we've got these. Neural lines for those people like Helen who've just joined are when we create neural lines uh, for this, and it's all about um, the like your brain firing. So, anybody who's seen my lives will know this is a really important part of it, is where it's, it's mindful, it's free. You you're led by the intention to enjoy yourself, let your mind chill. So the neuro art is one where you take your life for a walk, as we used to say. So, yeah, we it's all about just chilling, allowing yourself half an hour, an hour to go about your day, the rest of the day, so that you're not constantly fighting for time for yourself you get time and you you know when i've had time like this i'm happy to go about doing the rest of my day there's nothing better for me than to come together do a live than go and do me watching or whatever but yeah i feel very privileged to be in the position that what what I do for a living, well, try to do because at the moment things are different, um, is also my passion. But this drawing with a pen is not where my my art st stops. I draw with a pen. I draw with a mouse. I draw with a sewing machine. I draw with everything and anything sticks i don't stop it just thinking a drawing is something you know draw with knitting needles a crochet hook or creativity so i don't you know i, I draw with stitches met a lot at the moment so whatever you do creatively it doesn't matter what it does or what it is if it's creative that's what matters to be creative for yourself people that can't draw it's not about drawing if you can write your name you can put a mark even if you can't write your name that's art that is drawing so please remember that Right, so we've got this really nice, and I'm looking at it like this, like a, I wanted this to look like stitching. So I'm going to purposely draw some lines on it that would really translate the stitches. So, can you see, I've drawn these lines over it. They're not very big, but I might go over them in a different pen because I think that could do with it. So, I'm picking up my A, which is quite heavy, but we'll go back over with it now. Ooh, where's my own? There it is. 
take your time it's the only time i tell you take your time don't rush and then i'll say oh it doesn't matter this does matter really does matter because it's like setting the scene or the scenery for the neck so can you see that line's gone all the way down it's almost like stitched it together so now i'm looking at maybe another stitch that would do which would be perhaps looking at this one going along here and it's a like a, a chain stitch I'm not going to do a lot of this because it's really heavy with the pen so I'll bring it down here and just have it here Go. And you see it's like a chain stitch. So just to compensate, I'm going to give it a bit of a do for this way. Now make sure for your own sanity <laughs> that you go the right way that your writing goes are. No, not right. In you, you want to draw or paint or whatever. Ah, oh, you done it. Hi, you Carol. Just talking about being at the monastery. It's such a nice place, isn't it? So next, I'm just going to do. like that it's different to that that's like a herringbone pick your line it's like a maze pick your line any line and then Take your line to the bottom. There we go. So here we need to put some on here. So sometimes if you do the same, but you, cho you choose slightly different ways to do it that's a cross stitch but it's different to those okay so I'm just gonna cross my legs again because that that one's sore so i have to sit a certain way i sit cross leg that it's really strange because i have to wiggle my feet on the floor so here i'm happy with this very happy i like the way it's like stitched together it it, it it's got legs. So what I'm going to do, I think, is just this edge here. I'm just going to create a a line. I always remember when I was younger, I used to write with my ruler. You've probably done it yourself, you know. You get your ruler and then you go, you write all your words with it so they're all flat. I still do it now. Especially my journaling.
So I'm just matching up the stitching like that. Okay. Um, I might not do it there, but I might do a bit down here. So here, it's ragged up, bogged, ibbidi bobbidi, ibbidi bobbidi, is that even a word? So what I'm going to get for pencils, okay, um, I'll use a bronze needle today because you know, I can. Now I'm going to use my Faber Castell, Faber Castell. I'm going to use some lovely lush colours, lovely, I'm not even tied it, what's happening to me? So I'm looking at certain patterns, I haven't really got a mind for patterns today, I'm just going to go in. Now I've got my trusty sharpener here but this is the Derwent one and it's way too big. Uh, there is you need a colour one so that like, you're not wasting colours because these yeah they could they take quite a lot of colour so move that up I'm conscious that you oh let me pick out some colours for you first this is where your swatch is really coming under that's not that one, mm. maybe not. The, yeah, that looks about right. Apart from that one, looks like it's well out, but we'll see. Let's see what it looks like without it. Huh. Might not have that in, you see. Right, so let's have a little look. So I'm doing it this way. So this paper, believe it or not, is stunning to use. Right, so I'm pressing hard. No, well, not mad hard, but quite heavy at the top. And lift off. So I'm travelling that way. So I'm going to now get the mid range, and I'm going to go. over it like that but I'm going the opposite way so I'll show you again now there's a big difference between that and that one so that's where this middle one comes in And then we get an ombre. So, right now, those people who aren't familiar with ombre or anything like that, I'll do a quick one on my card and then you'll be a bit more familiar with it. Um, oh, I've got a sketch. I'll use that. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's do some swatches of colour. I'm going to use, oh, I keep flicking you, sorry. I'm just going to use this, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do, say, let's go for a shape. So let's go for a, a wiggle. Like that. Okay, so let's start off with the light. Well, this card super smooth it's beautiful right so very light and you can sort of wiggle over the back there you don't really need that the next one is your next color up so you go a little bit little bit over the first 
yeah and then oh that don't worry about that don't worry about that, honestly And next, let me just cover this up because it's an iron man. So each time you go back over it a third, so you go a third, a third, a third, a third. So I've got that like that. So the time is now to get the mid one back. Build it up, build it up. Don't try and do it all at once. You want to fill up the fibres, you don't want to break them in, uh, you don't want to break them at the beginning, you want to sort of fill them all up so that as you're putting the colour down, it's laying on top and not just creating a line. Now I've got some lines here, so what I want to do is just go back over. And because I haven't laid it down thick to begin with, I can blend it in, see there, taking some off with my fingernail. Going back in. So we've got our yellow to dark and then you go over it all yellow and it seals it in. So that's how we do an ombre. So I've, I've just done short ones here. I'm not, I'm intentionally not worried about mixing too much because I just want to create interesting shapes with the text still showing through. There we go. That's quite nice, isn't it? So now put these colours back, I think. They're all in order, but they're not anymore. Oh. Um, and I'm gonna go with some turquoise. It's gotta be done, hasn't it? Gotta be done, gotta be done. See. I've got blues and turquoises there, so whatever you pick, you know, is right. So when you've got a small space, you 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 in you tend to put too much pressure on all at once, but don't don't be led by that. Just think. Oh, I'll go with that one first. Uh, just think, right, okay. That's my space. That's how much I've got to use. And then alter it accordingly so that you've got, every, every time you're doing it, it's a third, a third, and a third. Like, even there, it's a third. So I wouldn't do it as high. Still do it, but it wouldn't be as high. So this is the other way where you put the light and the dark down and then you join it together in the middle with a, a mid-tone and then that blends it quite nicely. So we have got a white in here so when we've I would recommend the best white I've ever used is a Prisma. Um, 
it goes over anything. This is a Faber Castell, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's a cool grey. Sorry, it's not white. So I'll put a bit of cool grey on it. So really, see, so you can still have it like that. It still looks like a landscape, doesn't it? I think I might put a bit in. So I'm bringing some of the shapes together. So in this one here, I'm ignoring some of the writing, uh, some of the, the shapes. I'm bringing some shapes together. So we've got some nice patterns happening right here. And this is where your pencil shading is all about muscle memory. Take the pressure off the pencil as you progress. So it's a one colour blend. The others are like two, three, four colour blends. This is a one colour blend. Get it? So it goes dark to light. Just with the, you can go really dark and then get that with a two colour blend on it, but just to darken it there, quite like that. I think I like to do a little bit darker here as well. Just really nice on text paper. I've not done this for years, well, I have, did it with paint, but. What I'll do with, I'm going to do some blues and purples actually because I think that's quite nice with it. Um, oh, really? So, the next one in next one can you see how much easier it works when you've got the colours sort of lined up it, that's half the battle it really is so this is the three color up to now blend let's go for a four color blend i'm just going to darken it here so that there's a distinction between those two so a four color blend now i'm doing using a one color blend to blend it in that, so that just means all that is is the strength at which I'm putting on the laying down the colour. You know, if I wish then I could go back up and blend in more. So this is now a two colour blend. Three colour blend. using a one colour blend, you know, technique lifting off then back to my first. So we've got a nice bit of depth happening there. I think it needs it here as well, so. I'm going to invent it stopping there. So I'm going to change this now and I'm going to put very, oh, not that dark. When I meant dark, it was underneath the, um, I was ripping the fibres up. So 
So one colour blend, see how it's brought that up now. There's a distinction between those two. Otherwise it looks quite bland. Right, okay, so I've got those. I'm really happy with those. I love, I love the way they've come out. It, it's not finished there, so I'm going to put them there. And I look at the colour now that I think it's really going to make that pop. And there is a colour I have in mind, and um, it's got to be one of my favourites. I love these. They've got a little elastic on them. Because that the way I am. I think there's been a little mouse house guy come along and tidy these up for me. I can't remember doing it. Right, the one colour that's going to hop and pop. Orange. It's got to be on it. Got to be. So I'm going to look for the eggy yellow. See how this looks, putting a little bit of the eggy yellow all over. Go to the next one. I am not, honestly, working hard here. Seriously, I'm not doing anything. The pencils are doing it all. Look, <laughs> honestly, good products. I can't. I'm not banging on about it all the time, I hope, but good products, good products, good results, nothing to do. Sometimes we blame ourselves, don't we? Go, oh, I can't do it, but it's, you know, forget that. Sometimes, a lot of the time, if it's not fit for purpose, it's not going to give you good results. Nice. So here, we're going to go really ready orange. Now, red is weird because, well, no, it's not, well, it is, any colour is weird because it all depends on the colour you put it next to. So if you put red next to orange, It brings out the orange in it. If you put the red next to the blue, it brings out the purple in it. So, you know, like blue, green, green, blue. It's very, um, very much based on where you put it. So we've got a little bit right there. I need it brighter than that. So I'm going to go back over with an orange. And then I'm going to lift it. There we go, that's better. There's a lighter orange. And then... Like still. Okay, come back, come back. So we've got some nice bright colours here now. I'm thinking here. I want to go with orange. So heavy and light. more orange in it. Pick into you have to careful because some oranges are red some oranges are more bluer. Yeah that's it. You just see colour popping. So here so 
the bait. Yellow. There's quite a lot of pressure on there. And we've got some orange going through it now. And I think personally, I'm going to go with the blues. So I'm going to start with the blue pinks here. For the other blue pinks. Some are pink, some are bluer than the others. Mm -mm -mm. And some are redder. So A little bit of red there just to liven that up a little bit and then put a lilac colour all over it. I'm just going to put a pop of colour in there, pop of colour there, bright pink there. So I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking this needs to be a bit more pink. I know I've got green, it doesn't really matter because it will, you can blend green and pink together, they look really nice actually. So don't be worried about totally different colours, they do wear it. So there you go. So looking at that, it does still look like a landscape. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. But here, let's go for a, go for a red pink. No, your purple. Bella Pot will be, if she was watching this, she'd be losing her marbles now. She'd be going bananas. Because I like to get all my pencils out and have them in my hand when I'm working. I've got a bluer part to it now. Can you see there's reds, there's reds and blues in here. Let me put them down. Right, so there's red ones and blue ones. So if I point out that the red ones, the redder ones, I put a blue, and there's the blue, okay. You know, you can start to think, well, that feels better with that than that. There's a clash. See? Just a way of using it. So check your colours out. See if they look more like one or the other. So we've got the blue. We go like that. And That one could sit there, I think, as well. Oh, it's a bit stuck out, that. We better there. So, I'm looking at that now. I do, I know I'm going to crack my girly finger nails, so I've got it, I've got it. No way. There we go, that's better. Right, 
okay, I'm going to lift it all now, put them colours back. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'll leave the welt. I'll do it later, don't worry. Right, so. Nose. I'm going to light then wherever the lightest colour is. Just to give it that turn some it. it you might not see it online but it, it's just brought it all up so got my white there now i'm going to go to my trusty trusty dusty pens they're not dusty are they but, um, so a bit bit of both here now today so i'm looking at the colors i've got so immediately i'll start looking at families um, putting them into place I don't have to have them perfectly in place because I sort of know where I'm going so I'm going to go with a, quite a bright one so I'm using the mid green all over it I think it could do with a bit darker because the colours are so dark um, in this range you've got that option sometimes they don't go dark enough pens and they don't give you the, the depth you need oh that's perfect so i'm using a very dark blue just in areas Now, half the time, people don't notice this when they're actually looking at it because you're seeing all the other things. But say, for instance, I've picked a mid-orange. Can you see? It's quite, it's not that easy to see. But if I put it, concentrate it in a corner, say there, I'll bring it up to show you. And then drop down and the next colour, which would be a red. There we go. Can you see? So in, in here, lines even. You don't just have to do dots. There's lines cross hatching. So I'll show you that bit more here. So down here. Like that. Go up to the next orange. And these pens go happily on top of this fabric castell so let me just bring it up to show you can I see it yeah you can see that how brilliant it looks so I'll do some on the dark blue but I've got a couple of dark blues and purples here so you know, if I just bring that on across one way That's another. This is another lesson, by the way, that I will do, showing you 
wonderful cross hatching. There you go. So I've gone there. I want to now go with the darker blue because I'm, I'm, you know, you can get overpowered with it. But it's exactly the same. Thirds, thirds, and thirds. Well, I'm getting a bit flamboyant then. Cross hatching is not about scribble at all. Ever. You don't scribble with cross hatching. It's quite controlled. Scribble drawing is totally different. It's good, but it's totally different. So if I bring that up now to show you. Yeah, you get the idea. So you're building up instead of dots. Right, let me just tell you though. These pens, Marcia, if you go to, I'm surprised you've not seen these. Um, go to Highlight Crafts, okay? Highlight Crafts, come on. Right, I need something, get me some writing. Um, highlight Crafts, put in, put them in your bag, we called the craft master flexi line finers the line finers flexi fine liners right 24 I think um and if you put fl50 you get for 50 percent off so that means da, 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 you get them for 9.99 so I'll just put a little bit of black in there because i can um, now, if anybody's interested in how to draw a cross hatching, perhaps I could do a, another video on that because it's very different to pointillism in movement, but not in um, fundamental ideas. It's very similar fundamental ideas. It's just. You're not doing the dots, you're doing lines, and with these pens, it's perfect. I've got to tell you, it is perfect with these pens for this. Let me can you see it cross hatching. A little bit of black in there, all the way down there with the blues. The oranges. Come on. So let's try the greens now because we've got some dark greens here. So I've got that one and that one. But I've got a funny feeling the dark blue is going to be better for it. So I'll go to, believe it or not, the purples. Okay. The purples for the dark green. I know it sounds weird, but the dark purples we've got a blue and we've got a red one. You get there? So I'm going to use the blue and I'm just going to put that way. Now I'm starting, it, I'll show you on the other page like that. And depending on the, the, the area that you want to cover. How big the lines are so can you see how that's gone now how lovely that is right well now i'm going to just show you on this where's the, where's the bit of paper gone oh, oh, there, there. so here do it on here so look at the blue so you've got a bit of an idea okay so the start I always start from the way the light is part 
over. Right, okay, so it's quite light like that. So the next colour goes in. This won't be great because I'm rushing. So the next colour goes in in between. And then crosses. Get used to it. Next colour. You stagger. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that now. Oh, that's off the paper. Right, so I've got lots of lines happening there. So what you do to darken it you close up your lines so it's like you put more dots on here more lines Now, if anybody does want a lesson, I could do a lesson with it because it is a. I, I absolutely love hatching. It's the first thing I do, hatching and cross hatching. Um, see how you work backwards. So the last bit, I'm going to need a dark blue. And I'm, I've got one, but I'm going to use a purple to just show you. Oh, it's a blue, sorry. A bit gingerly with this, because I don't want it too heavy. So, further apart. Closer together. And it only becomes cross hatching when you go back over it to create a cross. Can you see? So up close. See less colour and lines there, more colour and lines there. So that's what you've got. So hey diddle diddle. So if you go to highlight crafts, um I'm putting FL. 50 you'll get 50 percent off which is a blooming good deal and they are good ask rachel oh here we go there we go loving the city they can go and get run up a shutter Right, I'm just going to add some deepness here because I think if we don't, it, see how deep it is here? So I'm just going to add some here and it, it's going to be hatching So because it'll be next to that uh, light. And then a bit sparer here. And then bigger bigger line so that I don't get too much um, weight so as you feather your lines up like that what happens is you put less weight on the end of them so they go finer so I'll bring that close to show you it's another way of doing it you see how the lines are a lot longer and finer that's another way Okay, so we've, I'm, I'm conscious that we've got this part here, we've got this part here, so I'm going to stamp on it, not now, I'm not going to stamp on it now, because 
I don't want to stamp on it now. But what I want to do is just put perhaps a pattern just with lines. These pens work brilliantly on here. I'm really in love with them. Really in love with them. Right. Okay. Last bit. I'm going to get my white pens. I weren't, gonna, I weren't doing any of this, but it's just led me there. So. Don't. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Right. Yes. Yes. So oh hang on, it's not right. Oh, that's working now. Um, I will bring it closer. So here. If you go over your black and miss it, don't worry. It creates interest in the background. So, you know, don't worry about it. See, when you rush, looks rubbish so it's much better for me to do one cross at a time much neater so Decided to change that. Um, change stitch. It's quite a way to to like a stud or a ball or a, it could be a bead. You could use beads and everything on this. I mean, I'd get this on the sewing machine now. So here I'm just going to do a. Little stitches like that. And then in a small space, she says, um, maybe this one, I'm just going to go. This is a rice stitch. And it's two tiny little dashes together. At random spaces. There we go. Let's bring it up to show you. So we're just small spaces. Oh, it might be seed stitch, not rice stitch. It's one of them. 
so we've got like that nice little bit of whatever it is going around there uh, i think i'll put it in here as well check your pen out before you use it because this is a a one mil um but it'll look different again with a 0.5 or something okay so got another one here that needs tidying up so let's tidy this one up so this is a So that's a zigzag. I don't want to go back over that now because I like it as that. So I'm just going to do perhaps break that up there. Break that up there. Break that up there. You have to do it all over. I think it needs something here, so maybe just a. Like that. So I'll go a bit quickly to show you, so I'll bring it a bit closer for you to see. So on here. Thank you. Cross hatchings added to it with the pens, the colour underneath, the texture of the um, text underneath. It's really created interest. You know, when I put a frame around that now, I'll chop it up. You're going to see a huge difference. I will here, I will put in some dots, I think, um, just to bring the edge. Because I've got that dotty line there. So what I'm going to do is go in a grey. And all I'm doing is using my pen, my ruler as a straight edge. So just to give it a bit of can you see it's just giving it a tiny bit of edge not enough on there so i'm going to go on with the black because don't forget you're not starting on white are you you're starting on this brown so much better can you see so i need to go up a little bit more Create that and then come across it with a, a little bit there. Now I don't know where this is going to end so before I chop it out, well when I've chopped it out I'll be able to see where it ends but when you see I've just given it a little bit of, just go down a little bit further just to break this up. There we go. You see how it's broken up that line? So, I've done quite a lot on this today. Um, I'm very happy with it. Very happy. So, what did we use? We used text paper. So, we've got our text paper. We used the Faber Castell or coloured pencils. We did the neural graphic art side to side. Thank you. Um, side to side with it. We've done. Um, See, I'm thinking that still needs that, so bear with me. I've got to do it. I won't be able to think straight. Um, so then we've done Faber-Castell pencils on the top, coloured it in, and we've gone to cross-hatching with the pens and pointillism with the pens. 
And if you want to see more about that, please go and see my other videos on youtube.com and uh, you'll get to see them on there. Go to my website, lewithis.com, and that has it all on. And uh, you'll be able to see different ones that we've used cross that, uh, pointillism on and how amazing it looks. Um, so then we coloured it in, we put some fake stitching on um, to create texture and see I'm desperately thinking does that need it? No. But then you can use, you know, gold, silver, any colour you want. Um, so then I've cross hatched over with the pens, um, using like the feathering technique, as I call it. Um, that's my name, it's not. So if you look for feathering technique and it comes up, then, you know, I didn't know it did. So it's just where you feather the, the lines out. It's something I taught the kids to do at school so that they haven't got a weighty line at the end. I went over it with line pens, so we used our pens. Um, I used an 8mm and a 2mm. We used what Uniball white pens and the Secura jelly pens. Um, it gets set bright white bold, so you get 1mm and 5mm in that set you know so in the signal you can get thick and thin white pencil to go over it all and before you know it you've got a nice piece there so i hope you enjoyed that thank you i'm glad i just want people to have a go because once you have a go and realize how easy it is you know and don't forget you can also put some pencil shading in so if you wanted to pencil shade say perhaps here to make it look like it's lifting off the page you see just be careful because it's old frayed paper delicate can you see now just bring it up brings it off the page and then we added some little fake stuff now i'll stitch on that before i added any 3d stuff i'll stitch on it if i want uh, my advice is if you've got really fine paper put another piece underneath it stitch it and then off you go stick whatever you want but it is going to go on my front cover and just to give you another little here's my stitching which i'm very proud of very neat look at that so this is my front cover for my new book that's going to be out at the end of the month that's going to look like that whoa with a concertina in it plus all my stamps so thank you for your time i will i can't do one um tuesday i'm out i think hang on i'm at hq I love it there. They just let me go there and I sit there and, oh, I'm there on Wednesday, so I will do one Monday or Tuesday. And I just do my work. And Diane caught me last time. She put me in the um, doofa. What's it called? The doofa doofa. Uh, it's not called the doofa. What's it called? The newsletter. And uh, she caught me there. Good job. I had my face away. Didn't have any tutti on. I know, I know, but even at my age. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back with you um over the weekend. I always come and have a look at what we're doing. I might spend some time here. I always spend time online in this group, as you know. Um I like to say hello to everybody and be a bit nosy. Um there's some people if you'd like to know um brian newbegin's got some great stencils out i bought a set uh, i like to support people um peter has got a wonderful exclusive news to tell us so i'm waiting to hear what that is because i'm nosy and uh yeah and 
I will see you next week.